guys, it's SJ, welcome to my channel. Today I am answering your Q&A. So I asked yesterday on Instagram and on my Facebook page whether you had any questions for me because I just reached 5k subscribers, woohoo! Um, and thought I love watching these Q&As, I shall do my own. I got tons of questions, thank you so, so much. So I will go through them all. A lot of them are about why I started vlogging, so I will cover that in one big go and then answer lots of others and I'll do this in two parts, so there'll be another half next week. So, first question from the Motherworks. Hello, she's asking, what has been the most challenging thing about being a vlogging mum? And it's hard, but genuinely I enjoy it so much, but I think the challenging thing is there's always gonna be times when you just feel really uninspired or like you've literally got nothing to say, you're just sick of the sound of your own voice or your own face and you're like, I just don't wanna do this for a little while. And I think it's okay at those points just to take a step back or just to sit and write like loads of ideas down and wait till something hits you that you kind of feel like you wanna talk about because it is hard. And just remember that, you know, there's no one putting that pressure on you. That pressure isn't external. Normally it's just coming from within ourselves. Like I should do an upload. Um, but yeah, just take it at your own pace and keep going through those grooves and slumps. Even if you have a big break, come back to it, pick up the camera again, get used to it. Um, the tiny mama has asked, would you ever live in Sweden full time? I don't think we will, and not because I'm anti-living in Sweden. I think people think it's like my choice not to, but actually my husband's never wanted to go back to Sweden. For him, London was like a dream kind of destination. Um, and he's always said if we did move, we'd probably go more towards like New York or San Francisco or somewhere, because we're big city people. We love being in like big cities with tons of culture and people and stuff. So not on the cards. Um, Laurie Sharp, hello, asked, when and why did you begin vlogging? And actually quite a few people have asked this. And it's a bit of an unusual story because I work full time at an ad agency in London, one of the big creative agencies, I've done that for like 10 years. Um, and when I went back after having Finn, I was working on a big campaign, I actually made a film for Fairy on Bio, and I'll link it below because it's a beautiful film. And we made it, and it was a bit of a passion project, as in we did it for not very much money, we used a real family within it, a really lovely mum director, woman director, and we didn't have any budget to put it on TV, so we were using influencers, working with them and trying to like ask them to help us get some reach, and people really loved the idea and were helping us, so we were working with like Louise Pentland, and actually Kate from Dolly Bobo um, did a vlog for us and I just got really into seeing how working together with like with real mums can make an idea so much better and reaches most better people so much better than normal TV and traditional media so I was googling like other mum influencers mummy vloggers to work with um, for work and came across this article saying there's a brand new channel starting called Channel Mum, we're looking for new voices. And I literally remember the moment so well, I was sat having a glass of red wine, Henrik was out for the evening, otherwise I probably wouldn't have done it. And I just filled in the little form and was like, yeah, I would like to actually talk about being a working mum because there didn't seem to be any working mums doing it. And it's hard when you're a working mum to watch Vlogmas and all these people having amazing experiences when I'm literally at my desk and, um, I'd been back at work, I was struggling. What I'm gonna do actually is link below in the comments if I can, the unlisted link to my channel mum audition video because it's still on there um, and it's private but I think if you've got the link you can watch it and you can go and watch and just crack up because I'd never done anything like this in my life before. Um, and then yeah, randomly got it, you know, and um, I was so surprised. I didn't remember I didn't email them back for absolutely weeks and they had to email me and were like, are you gonna do it? You just haven't got back to us. And I was like, oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> At the time, I didn't have my own YouTube channel and I didn't need to. I just had to send my content to Channel Mum and it all went up on Channel Mum's YouTube page. It was like that for about a year. A year in, they said, look, why don't you try starting your own YouTube channel as well? Um, but I didn't really have time working full time you know, to have a really good channel. But I used to do uploads now and again. And then sort of towards the end of my maternity with Evelina, you can imagine having two kids be working full time, being pregnant, vlogging was really like, not like, I couldn't stick to a schedule or anything like that. But I loved it. And then this year it's kind of been my real time to kind of do my YouTube channel. And yeah, that's how I started, why? And yeah, it worked so well with my job. My job was so supportive of me being a vlogger. They found it hilarious. And it was awkward when like clients would find out and they were like, oh my God, just saw you on YouTube. And you're like trying to be professional, but, and they're like watching a video about your breastfeeding or something. <laughs> but luckily, 
they all were so supportive of it and all thought it was quite amazing because it's such a new way of working with brands and I was doing kind of both sides of the coin. So there you have it. Um, so Lisa Dixon, hi Lisa. She asked, what career would you love to do besides what you're doing now? So I never could have imagined doing vlogging, but before I did advertising, I actually worked, um, did, was a radio presenter for a little while alongside university. So I worked for Invicta FM, if anyone remembers Invicta FM, I think it's now Heart, um, and it's in Kent and I think a bit of Essex. And I did Club Invicta on Friday, Saturday nights. And maybe I should have carried on pursuing that because after I left uni and I left Kent, I moved to London, got a job in advertising and maybe I could have done radio. Who knows? Face for radio, as they say. Um, Kcash52, what characteristics from you and your hubby do you see in your children? This is such a good question. And I think that everyone says that Freddie, my eldest, is all Henrik. Like they're so similar. And his mum and dad, like, it's like having Henrik back. But I see a lot of my creativity in Freddie. Like he loves to draw, he loves to write. And that's our favorite thing to do together. Finn is probably gets all my sensitivity like he is so sensitive and he can like have like big emotions and then they drop away again which is what I'm like um but he's got Henrik's like sportiness and never sitting still um and then Evelina I think she's probably too little but I'm just hoping she's all me because <laughs> she's a girl <laughs> so everyone always looks at her and goes she looks like and they try to think of someone she looks like a like Henrik or Henrik's cousin I'm like just say she looks like me <laughs> um sweetest life hello she says who inspires you what are your top three highlights of being a mama um i get inspired by so many people that i follow on social media and i think that's what social media is so good at because you can like create your own world and just follow people who give you loads of positivity loads of ideas um and i certainly do that and i think that um most people that i follow on social media I follow because they inspire me to either like be a better man, be a more organised man, take prettier pictures, be more positive. Like I watch speed cleaning videos and never pick up the Hoover. So it's just more about watching it unfold. But yeah, I'm very inspired by like Siobhan Freegard who founded Net Mums and Channel Mum. Honestly, she's, I've heard her speak a few times and she's incredible. And she won like an OBE for parent services to parents. Like she inspired me so much. She quit a big career to found Net Mums on like five grand loan um, while having three kids after experiencing postnatal depression herself and I just love that Channel Mo is founded on such kind of just belief in parents needing help and she's really inspiring. Three highlights of being a mum, I think I'm just going to say birth, like birth, labour, meeting your baby for the first time is a highlight of your entire life isn't it and then I guess seeing them together and seeing them kind of just um how they are with each other I just really one of my aims in life is that my children are close as adults so that would just make me so so happy um and I think seeing them kind of get their independence and their little personalities coming out like sending Freddie off to school every day is hard but at the same time it's a highlight because you're kind of like I've made a real life person who's now out in the world and he's the best person in the world. Next question by R Holland 32 Hello, do you think you'll have any more babies? Sadly not. I think that three was our limit. We always said three. We are so happy with our three. I'm just excited to see them now grow up and go on more adventures together when they're older. And yeah, three's us done. Danny says, what's your favourite thing about each of your children? That is such a good question. I think with Freddie, I've already said, it's definitely his... Um, his, du his double dimples, <laughs> no. it's his creativity and his kind of like, I love all that about him, just his imagination. And with Finn, it's definitely his cheekiness. Like, he is so cheeky, typical kind of second son, I guess, just got a twinkle in his eye all the time and does something cheeky. And Evelina is just um, her cuddles at the moment, I guess. She's so snuggly at the moment. She just snuggles right into me. And as much as her clinginess can be stressful, her cuddles make up for it. Lisi, hi, asks, how did you meet your husband and where did you grow up? I met my husband at university in Canterbury. We went to the University of Kent and Canterbury together. We were in the same halls. He was not interested in me at all. I had to basically stalk him um, until he finally went out with me um, in the second year at uni. And yeah, then he never went back to Sweden. He was just supposed to come for a short time, but yeah, fell in love and stayed. Sorry, mother-in-law. Um, and I grew up in Swindon. 
Life with Tansy and Myla. Hello. Asks, what was harder, going from one child to two or two to three? Um, and what was the biggest difference between raising boys and then Evelina? Going from two to three, I found harder, mainly because Finn was a super easy baby and Evelina was a really colicky baby. And so having two already with different needs and then having a baby, I found harder. But I think that's mainly because of the colic because she used to cry so much and I found that really tough. And I think that probably would have been the same if Finn had been colicky. Finn was just the easiest baby in the world. Didn't they have him type of baby? Lulled me into having my third. And the biggest difference, so far I've noticed zero difference between the boys and the little girl. I'm kind of excited to do the typical girly things when she's a bit older, like girl parties and going to ballet and things like that. I know boys can do ballet, but my boys have never really been into it. So I will sort of see, I think, over the first sort of three to five years, I think that's when it's going to really be different having a girl. But it's as yet, nothing really. And I really thought it would be more different, but boy mums is no different <laughs> you're not missing out mrs meldrum hi rebecca is asking what should we call another baby you heard it here first she's pregnant though <laughs> she's not girl and boy name since i'm the baby name expert and who are my mum crushes so when rebecca when you were pregnant with poppy i thought it was going to be Phoebe, which I think is a kind of a mixture between Poppy and Ophelia, so I'm basically saying that I was right. <laughs> but I don't know, I think for a girl, something long and pretty, because her girls have such pretty names, so maybe like an Aurelia, I think that like, that sounds nice with the other girls' names, and it means golden, and I just think that would be really, really lovely for you. And for a boy, I think you would go with something like super trendy and unique, Oh, I'm gonna have to think about it. I'm gonna have to think about it and put it in the comments because this is like a big ask. <laughs> I literally like to ponder about this for quite a while. I know you like Davy for a boy and I really like Davy. It was on my list as well. I think it's really, really cute. And who are my mum crushes? To be honest, everyone, there's so many mum crushes on YouTube. I will link below all the channels that I follow mostly. I watch lots and lots of YouTube, but there are some that like I always, always watch and I have huge mum crushes on all of those people. Um, so, but my celebrity mum crush at the moment is Tamara Eccleston. Has anyone watched Tamara's World? I am obsessed with it and I really love her. She's shocked me how down to earth she is, even though she's like a billionaire and their lifestyle is pretty incredible. She's lovely and she's still breastfeeding her three-year-old. She hardly ever leaves her, never leaves her with a babysitter. It's interesting. New York Cheesecake, hello. What would you wish each of your kids for the future? For the future, I think for Freddie, I really want him to have some sort of creative career. I really want to carry on with his creativity because he's also very good at like maths. Um, so he's a real mixture of me and Henrik because Henrik's not creative at all and I'm not mathematical at all. And I just want him to have a creative career because I just think it's much more fun. <laughs> oh, for Finn, I don't know. I just wish that he um, is really stayed so close to Freddie and Evelina and always lives next door to mummy. <laughs> <laughs> and for Evelina, I just hope that Evelina just grows up to be really kind and gentle and loving and has really, really good friends because I think that strong friendships for girls are so important and I'm lucky that I've had the same best friends since I was literally three um, and they, their friendship has meant that I've never had really as bad teenage years as I know I probably would have without knowing I had best, best friends by my side. So yeah, friendships for her are going to be really, really important. So I think this is quite long now, so I will stop and answer the rest of your questions next week. So do hit subscribe to follow and the little bell for a notification. Thanks again for asking the questions. I really, really appreciate it. And I will see you on Monday for Baby Name Mondays. Take care, guys. Bye.